right everything is up to 99 percent or a hundred percent there's only one last thing one last side quest to do which is here which is the um, given to me by uchu remember the nahuatl can take many shapes trust nothing you see in the wilderness uh and he wants us to get that champion's bow that was supposed to be for um the kid i can't believe how much atsley has grown in such there we go that's that's his name atsley it's uh somewhere around here i think ish Oh, I think it's here. I think, yeah, it's here. So, I'm gonna go here. And I'm, we're gonna go and do that all together. Before reading and listening to Lara's narration of the books. Uh, things that she found all over the, um, all over the field. So, all the documents, we're gonna just, you know, read through it, listen through it. And have a basically a chill time. Before we rush to the end of the game, with uh, by talking to Edsley, uh, first of all, to prevent any anything bad from happening, we are going to save the game in case the game crashes again, because we all know this game is quite prone to doing that. Okay, is this how I track it? Okay, th there it is. Okay. It's weird that we are allowed to wear something outside of um, the regular costume in now when we're here. Look at look at the little little, little jaguar tail that Lara has. Look like at little keychain. That's cute. Oh, hang on a sec. That encoder seems to be fun. Destroying my CPU for a minute. Alright, we'll be right back. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed I've, I've sorted it out. I did see frame drops just now and I, and I wasn't pleased. It's too quiet. I feel like something's out there. Um. Oh, I have no guns. Joy. What the? If the frame rate on this video looks bad, I do sincerely apologize. We'll try to fix it in case it does. Oh, it's there. I don't have guns. That's a skull. Uh, okay, what is that? Why? Oh god. Defeat the Nahuel. Where'd he go? That was weird. It doesn't die. It's um, it's it's the thing from He-Man. Uh, Battle Cat. 
Shadow Cat from He-Man. Well then. It's a nice bow. It's a nice bow. All right, let's get this bow back to Uchu. No skinning. Well then, that was terrifying. So after that, we'll we'll start reading all of these. Uh, there's only one that's left, and it's my notebook. So... I think we've done pretty good, all things into it. This thing over here... What is it? I guess it doesn't matter now. We just have to get back to Uchi. Not this way. Oh, diving board. Way No. Never mind. Where am I? Huh. Interesting. There's a campfire. Nope. We can't take the campfire. We have to go through this. Because that's where the mission says we go. And then I'll change out of this. Right. It's you. They're in the same place. Those two missions. Sorry, kid. Whatever you are. Uh, throughout this, the little break in between the two videos that we took, I finished up the. Um, I, well, I didn't finish up. I bought another shotgun, which is rapid fire. Although it's gonna use a lot of ammo. I bought a lot of ammo pouches. And uh, I've got a fair amount of gold, but I'm not gonna spend them on ammo. I believe you can find them later when like the battle starts. Also, Lara's hair here looks amazing. Like, look at that. That little bit when the hair is like drapes across the shoulder. Pretty cool. Uh, Uchi, right. You, you are somewhere here. There you go. Hi. The champion's bow. The final piece to herald in the future of Pai TT. And what of the Nakwa? Did you face it? I did. It's dead. Tell me, what shape did it take? It was a jaguar. Ah, the most powerful of its forms. It must have seen you as a formidable foe. Uchu, how long has this Noal been in the jungle? As children, there were always stories to keep us from straying beyond the bounds of Paititi. But since Amaru took power, the Nahuatl has been more active. Do you believe Amaru commands the Nahuatl? Yes, to keep his hands on our throats, but no longer. You have done a great thing for the future of Paititi, Lara. I would be honored if you would join us for the ceremony of kings. The honor would be mine. Here, I have something for you. This is from the armor Etzli's father, Sairi, wore. It is a symbol of your bravery. I would like you to have it. Thank you, Uchu. Um, cool. Oh, we actually get like a little cutscene. Uhumi Lubaka Hawe, Tupayal Tantesh, Ahak Kuntesh, Lektum Ben Kahbalila, Ek Kamikesh Yetel Kima Kolal, Tehau Kimbesahila. 
Etsli, Upalu Nuratu, Yetel Sairi, Manen. Upayo Kilaj Toxaje, Chup Yetel Ujitzatil, Achilan Calavilov, Chen Shikintej, Bello Akusholale, Yanu Yantal Tiketil, Yetel Yatzil, Leagnaj Albatele, Chup Yetel Umuka Chilan Calavilov, Chimpolte Bello, Tuyana Cabe, Anak Cochil Yetel Tohil, Yetel Teche, Tankelem Etzli, Chupech Yetel Tumben Kintzilov, Betabaj juntul peca nahawil, tas ala volal, tas yakunaj, tiale lo makutal, apat katalak tujun, lechich olalilo, saawoli, yetel betu beitalta kajnalil. Voices, the, na the native voices, is the lack of emotion. Kintashik tesh etzli, upali lunuratu yetel sairi, atumbe nakawesh. Well done, Etsli. Someone knock a, some, someone's knocking a a, a a can over. Manko's tunic. Oh, Manko was the uh, the the guy that we uh, that we we helped. No, he was the guy whose tomb we I can't believe how much Etsli we we, uh, we raided. To get the uh, is it the bow? No, not the bow. We just got the bow. Um, something else. Anyway, not important. We'll craft Manco's tunic and um, we'll wear it with Manco's boots. And I think we'll rock this. So we got this shotgun. This one's um, this one's good, and then this one's got high rate of fire and high reload speed because it's got a drum. See, and this is your your, your standard. I think we'll stick to we'll, we'll use this new one. Alrighty. Oh, don't we look cozy in that? Okay, it's time for a little bit of trivia. Well, not trivia, a little bit of a lesson, I guess. Find a nice comfy spot. This this looks nice. So we'll wait here and we'll start reading. So, I think the important one is the Path to of the Stars. The hidden city, go south along the shore until you find the pink fish. Then chase the heart of the serpent to the Silver Crown Mountain where the twins confer. So, I think Path of the Stars is the photographs and artifacts on my journey in South, South America. We've covered lots of grounds th uh, through jungles, rivers, and ca caverns in order to stop Dominguez. Several people gave up their lives so that we can continue on. Understanding sacrifice are sometimes needed for the greater good. So, these are the pictures that... Uh, these are the main story thing. This is the star Al Fard, the solitary one, the brightest star in the western sky and the heart of the Hydra constellation. Two thousand years ago, it's set in the west. That's where I hope to find the hidden city. In the Maya long count calendar, all dates have five numbers. This numeral was damaged to look like a thirteen, but what if it's really an eight? That's a 2,000 year difference, and the constellations would be in a completely different position. So the star path would lead west to somewhere in Peru. This dagger is the key of Shackshell. I found an inscription near it. The key to Eshell's heart unlocks the cleansing. This is the path to the hidden city. It seems to describe a series of trials entering through a jaguar mouth. A spider and an eagle that rises toward a temple, leading to a serpent with a silver eye. This is a serpent-shaped statuette I found in an ancient Maya tomb in the lost city of Paititi. It's yet another clue in my search for the silver box of Ishel. So hidden information somewhere. There appears to be some irregular edges, 
like a key. But a key to what? A clue to where Lopez took the silver box. The heart of the serpent is in the cup, near the many stone faces. The silver box of Ishel, unlocked by the key of Shakshal, and used to summon the god Kukulkan. She's hidden information somewhere. What the hell? Uh, oh. Funny how something so slight could be fundamental in creating or averting the end of the world. I'm very interested to in seeing what this is. All right. Um, is it from the bottom? You know what? We'll do it from the top. We'll do it from the top. It's a lot to get through. Oh, wait. Something about the resistance that we didn't get. Which is weird because 100% of everything now. Maybe you get it after. Like, I see I've got 100% just just about everywhere. So I, I'm guessing that last one about the resistance is you um, you get it when you're doing the final mission. All right, the emissary. 24th of November, 1603. I accompanied Andreas Lopez, a group of 12 soldiers and two molosses through the jungle. The directions the Jesuits provided to Trinity were excellent, so we discovered the hidden city with little difficulty. The natives of the city welcomed us warily, but we plied them with gifts, and they reluctantly allowed us to enter the city, unaware of our true intentions. Lopez has begun to search for the artifact while we distract the city's leaders. Wait, what? Why does it go from 1, 3, 2? 26th of November. Okay. 26th November. 26th of November. 1603. 29th of November. Okay. 2 plus. 26th of November. 1603. At dinner, Lopez asked me if I believed these heathens were worthy of the artifact's alleged power. I had to admit that the Pytetians seemed noble and industrious. However, their taut skin stretched tight over sinewy muscles and lack of shame made them more similar to beasts. And what of our leaders in the society, he then asked. Should they be able to wave their perfumed and ring fingers in any direction and expect us to obey? To return and sit at their side when they beckon? Do they not treat us as inferior beings, as beasts as well? I had no answer. What he'd said was heresy and treason, but in some way, I wondered if it wasn't the truth. 29th of November, 1603. After dinner, Lopez left the city. I followed, worried he might not return. I found him standing by the riverbank, lips moving as though in prayer. Not wishing to disturb him, I waited. His communion with God must have lasted through the night, and I regret to admit I fell asleep. For the next thing I knew, Lopez stood smiling serenely over me, the morning sun behind him, creating a halo. He helped me to my feet and clasped me in a strong embrace. True Elos, I know where to find the artifact, he whispered in my ear. Lopez sounds like a creep. This rosary has six decades instead of the usual five. A very ornate example of the Brigantine version. There appears to be an engraving. Oh, I see the engraving. Uh, Andreas Lopez. There we go. Old tome. This leather-bound volume of prayers seems to be from the late 16th century. It's in remarkable condition. Someone decided this depiction of Christ's death needed a little sprucing up. God damn it. Made in China somewhere? It's amazing how the beliefs of disparate cultures can become intertwined over time. The ink is badly faded. It's difficult to make anything out. Savage. Out. Outrageous betrayal. And this isn't parchment paper. It's thicker. Animal hide or human, maybe. Well then, that's a disgusting note. Number four. 
30th of November, 1603. With a local man as a guide, Lopez, the soldiers and I set out from the city before first light, just as well as a terrible flu began to spread through the population. Lopez is convinced his artifact does not lie in the city itself, but somewhere just outside. I asked if it was not somewhat hypocritical to enlist the help of those loathsome people. Do not loathe them, he said, any more than you would these molossers. They are all creations of the Lord our God, as are we. I told him I was stunned to hear him speak in this fashion, but he took my hands and we prayed. The energy of his faith ran from him to me until I felt the chains of doubt fall from my heart. This uh, Serrano guy sounds like the guy that was shot in the head by Lopez in, the, uh, in his tomb. We will go to Lara's notebook last. A rubbing taken from the walls of the cenote. It is simply a large X and the word run. The detailed engravings on this helmet in its unusually good condition could mean this helmet was worn more as an accessory rather than protection in combat. Hidden information, where are you? Hmm. Wait, what? Oh, I felt something. Um. Perhaps Lopez used it to project an air of importance. I don't understand what that means. Like, why? Why is it like that? Okay, five is here. First of December, sixteen o three, we've entered a cenote not far from the city and set up camp in a small alcove. Lopez has spent the evening staring into the flames, utterly ensorcelled, his dinner untouched. Twice I attempted a conversation, but his silence rebuffed me each time. He is utterly focused on this artifact. If I were a more superstitious man, I would wonder if the artifact is speaking to him directly. The soldiers keep to themselves as well. They seem anxious for battle. One of their dogs stared at me all evening, as though I were to be his next meal. 1st of December, 1603. A strange noise woke me in the middle of the night. I found Lopez still staring at the fire, though now it was nothing but coals. I asked him if he'd heard the noise as well but all he did was grunt. I wrapped a blanket about his shoulders and built up the fire again. Then I sat and listened. Far off shrieks and hisses, likely distorted by the twists of the caverns. But underneath all those sounds, I heard a faint thrum. I've heard something like that before, but rarely and only when in the deepest of prayers. It sounded like the voice of God. Well then, that's creepy enough already. Undated. Strange warriors pursued us through the caverns. We moved quickly, too quickly for an accurate description. Most of the soldiers fell in battle. They were valiant, but outmatched and outnumbered. Eventually, Lopez, I, and a single surviving soldier reached a magnificent temple. I cannot imagine how the people managed to build such a structure so deep underground. A massive door blocked our progress. Lopez, his voice frantic and breaking, ordered Perez, the last remaining conquistador, to stand guard while we worked on the mechanism. The door began to roll open. Our celebration of success was drastically cut short by the dying screams of Perez. The sound haunts me still. That's the same rolling door we had. The door closed and a silence settled. So great and so vast, I held my breath for fear of breaking it. Lopez turned to me, his eyes wild, a smile screwed across his face. He came toward me, arms outstretched, and for a moment fear flickered across my heart. But he pulled me close, his fingers digging into my shoulders. I found it, he whispered in my ear, and releasing me, he wandered through this room, walls of pure jade reaching up to the heavens, completely covered in intricate etched mosaics and carved figures, I followed at a distance as he approached an altar and watched as he lifted a silver box from it. 
That was eight, now nine. 21st of December, 1603. Lopez had grown pensive since exiting the cenote. I led the way, and when I turned toward the city, at last he spoke, calling for us to stop. Then, after swearing me to silence, he shared with me a secret he had been carrying. That night, by the river, I met with the Emperor. I confessed to him who I was, who we are, and the true purpose of our visit. Trinity's fattened leaders, too busy with politics for even the morning's prayers, are not worthy of the box. The Emperor and I agreed that the only way to keep it safe from them was for me to claim it, take it far from here and hide it until one of the Paititi royal line, a chosen one, can follow his antecedents' clues and rediscover it. Having thus unburdened himself, Lopez turned on his heels and set a course deeper into the jungle. Well then, more adventures of the scribe Serrano. Lopez created a new identity and purpose. In some ways, I suppose I should be thankful. He kept the silver box out of Trinity's hands for close to 500 years. Okay. Brother de la Cruz appeared one day, emerging from the jungle, breathing new life into the mission. There were just the three of us when he arrived, and Sister Dorothea had been ill for many weeks. He and his associate began to work that first day. By the next week, de la Cruz had recruited a workforce of three dozen. They had prepared the bell tower and worked the fields, planting crops. Brother de la Cruz aims to make us self-sufficient. We'd spent so long alone out here, I'd worried we'd lose God's ear. Lo and behold, we not only had his ear, but he sent another to act as his hands as well. The others are worried that brothers de la Cruz and Serrano will not return. I have so far maintained they will, that they always have. But in my heart, I am beginning to believe we have seen the last of them, and that grief weighs heavily. We will continue their work. Either they will return to find we have not forgotten the teachings, or they will look down on us from above and bless our continued labors. 10, 11, 12, 13. 25th of December, 1603. It has been four days since we turned away from the city. We traveled in silence and in circles, guided by a confusion of grief, relief, and celebration. Lopez and I exited the jungle and landed in a clearing, under the gaze of several faces carved into the side of the mountain. Lopez had an episode, as he later called it. He threw himself in front of the faces and screamed for forgiveness. The heaviest sin on his heart was abandoning Perez to the strange warriors. They had grown close over the journey. Try as I might, I could not console him. So I built a fire and waited as he decreed his actions and pleaded for forgiveness from the silent stone faces. 26th of December, 1603. Lopez woke me, having already prepared a Spartan breakfast. This is where we were meant to be, he said, a cold determination in his voice, so very different from how he acted just the day before. I finished my meal as he spoke of holy retribution, how he had acted in error, but now God had put his hands on his shoulders and shown him the path to walk. We will spread the true word of God from this small mission, he said, pointing to an adobe building just beyond the stone faces. We will prepare the path for the chosen one to follow, for only he who does will be worthy of this box. And so they made the, the, the trial of the Jesus. 30th of December, 1603. Lopez has just returned from a nearby village, and with him came a group he says will follow him and help us with construction. There was something strange about his behavior. I attributed it to the long journey through the jungle. That night, however, he admitted what had been bothering him. They followed me, he whispered. The others. He walked off. I spent that sleepless night worrying about his deviations toward madness. 18th of December, 1604. An entire year? I've collected this journal for far wow. too long. We've worked hard to build the mission. Every day more people arrive. Native villagers seeking conversion. Soldiers tired of war. 
others whose faith has been tested by the long, dangerous journey through the jungle, all lured by Lopez's gospel of purity through labor. We work from sunrise to sunset, and then Lopez, or Angel de la Cruz as he now calls himself, spends his evening preaching the mission's purpose, to test the Chosen One. He's calmed considerably, and if he believes something pursues him still, he keeps it to himself. Tomorrow we begin to build the library, where the box will safely rest until it is ready to be found by the Chosen One. A wheel lock pistol, never mass produced and banned in the Holy Roman Empire, ostentatiously decorated, a bit much for a missionary, but maybe a fitting weapon for an egoist such as Lopez. There's some damage to the pommel, but otherwise the weapon seems in fine condition. So I'm guessing that Lopez, uh, obviously being the one in in the casket, shoots uh, Serrano, who's the who's the guy that locks him in. This enigmatic illustration recovered from a cursed and empty mausoleum might be what our brave adventurer needs to finally find the lost treasure of the White Queen. She's managed to decipher the ancient text and has found a series of clues. A set of coordinates, a giant bat, and a series of game pieces in a line. The intrepid Lara will have to figure out what they all mean. Right, that kid Lara. I just wanted to thank you for your discretion, as well as the work you have done. The vault has been constructed exactly to my specifications. The final payment will be sent at the end of the week. The delay was due to an accounting error, which has now been rectified. Yours, Richard Croft. It has taken our hero years to piece this map together, spending nights in dusty libraries going through ancient tomes, exploring sunken ships stripped of treasure, and chasing down any lead, no matter how faint it may be. If she can recover the treasure, a brave adventurer may prove herself worthy of becoming Lord Richard Croft's assistant. I have thought about it many times, and I'm still adamant that Lara be spared from this terrible grief, as you call it. Having her constantly thinking about her mother will only be more painful. It is better for her to be a child and not be burdened by such heavy thoughts. If you do not desist in this campaign of yours, I will not hesitate to terminate your employment at Croft Manor. It's a little harsh. I think this is from when we walked the El Memsha. I don't remember much, except for how spicy the bazaar smelled. Mum looks so happy. So does Dad. Mum should be M-U-M, not M-O-M. Whoa. Okay. It's not fair. Why did she have to die? Hey. This looks like a figure from that game Mum and Dad used to play. But why is it out here, in the playground? There's an A scratched in the bottom for Amelia. I miss you, Mum. See, Mum here, M-U-M, on top, M-O-M, God, game. Sir. I understand these last few years have been more than difficult for you. We all miss Amelia terribly. However, I worry Lara has begun to forget what little she knew about her mother. A terrible thing. I realize it is not my place to pry, but have you reconsidered talking to her about Amelia? My belief is that it would help you get over your tremendous grief and bring you two closer. Well then, maybe that was why, uh the reply to uh, Winston said, hey, stop it. Cinnabar was used in the ancient past for producing a bright orange pigmentation on ceramics, murals, tattoos, and in religious ceremonies. It's also an island where Blaine, the fire Pokemon leader, fights you. This is a traditional foot plow, still used in the Andes today, even outside Paititi. Sometimes the simple ways are still the best. The canopa serves as a receptacle for offerings of cocoa and animal tallow. The stuffed canopa is thrown into the farmer's field at the start of the harvest season as a gift for Pachamama, the mother god. 
It is said, if the present is accepted, the farmer will yield large crops in a successful breeding season. Cool. It's a llama, though. The Inca use a combination of freeze-drying and salt to preserve just about anything edible. Chaki and chunos are basically meat and potatoes. Delicious. Okay, sure. These ceremonial ceramic jars are used to store corn beer or chicha. The bottom of these arpu are usually pointed to aid when pouring into smaller serving containers. That's clever, but means it'll be really hard to store. The people of the Andes have been perfecting the art of weaving for thousands of years. This chuspas is a wonderful example, woven of llama or alpaca hair and traditionally used to carry cocoa leaves. It clearly highlights the weaver's skill. Beautiful. It is quite nice. This is a little bit unusual. It shows herds of sheep, llamas, and goats. But one farmer wouldn't usually tend three distinct herds like this. That one llama, alone on the hill. That must be Urquichile, the Incan god who watches over animals. Urquichile was often depicted as a llama. This is a dedication from all the local herders to the one who protects their flocks, thanking Urquichile for the preservation of their livelihood. Urquichile, llama god. This is a dedication to Supe, god of death and ruler of Uku Pasha, the Incan underworld. It entreats him to come forth with his legions of demons and to converge on this site where the local people will do him honor with written poems extolling his greatness or offerings of food and drink. By paying him the respect he deserves in this way, the local people pray he will only take those he must and not harm any others of their community unnecessarily. A little bit spooky, but okay. A dragon. This must be depicting Pachamama, the Incan goddess of motherhood, earth, and time. She presided over fertility, the harvest, and planting. Her body was the mountains, and she was also the cause of earthquakes. People used to make miniature pieces of clothing with highly intricate designs solely for the purpose of burning them in dedication to her. That would account for the scorch marks on the floor. And those brown stains must be llama blood. Another popular sacrifice. Poor llamas. This must be Mama Zara. <laughs> I always thought her forms of worship were a fun tradition. She was the Incan goddess of grain, and her name means May's mother. So if ever a farmer found a strange maize plant, they would dress it up like a doll in honor of her. She was also the goddess of willow trees, so sometimes the farming communities would hang one of their maize dolls from a willow tree and dance around it for her. So I'm guessing Mama is mother and Zara is maize. <laughs> There's no mistaking that bright golden disc. Inti, the most important god of the Inca. He was the god of the sun, protector of the people, and the provider of warmth and light. Some legends also credit him with teaching humans the ways of civilization. And the Incan emperors were either considered his lineal descendants or physical incarnations of Inti on Earth, depending on which emperor you asked. So, uh, what about, what about, what about Koto Khan? This depicts the story of Vera Kocha, the father of all creation. He formed the heavens, the earth, the sun and stars, the moon, time itself, and all living beings, including the other gods. At first, Viracocha was considered to be the supreme god of the Inca, but with time that honor passed to his son, Inti, the god of the sun. Still, Viracocha retained his link to the sea. His name literally means fat or foam of the sea. Sounds a little bit unbalanced, this guy. He's like, I'm the god of everything. Kony Rea, the Incan god of the moon. He was relatively low in status, so he didn't have a mate. This tells the story of how he reshaped his sperm into the form of a fruit, which impregnated the goddess Kaviaka when she ate it. Hm. His pregnancy came as quite a surprise since Kaviaka was a virgin. But... When her son was born, the boy immediately solved the question of his paternity by crawling right towards Coney Rea. 
Kafirka was so humiliated by Coney Rea's low standing that she fled with her son to Peru, where they turned into coastal rocks. Oh, she's like, ew, you're just the god of the moon. Why couldn't the god of the sun have my baby? This depicts the Incan god Kon. That's so dumb. He was dumb. the son of Inti, the sun god, and Pachamama, the moon goddess. Kon was in charge of the wind and the rain. Although, in some legends, he was only in charge of the weather that came from the south, while his brother, Pachacamac, was in charge of weather that came from the north. All right, brother. You got the south, I got the north, yeah? All right, good. Expedition unknown. This is items related to Percy Fawcett's final expedition. Percy Fawcett must have learned some key information to while in Brazil that caused him to venture west into Peru in search of Zed. But the jungle got the better of him and he died before making his discovery. Jack, as driven as his father, refused to give up. He pushed forward on, convinced Zed was close. Unfortunately, the quest claimed Jack and Raleigh Rimmel, as well as leaving poor Nina Fawcett without a husband or a son. And they were wondering what happened until now, that is. The monogram reads PHF. That has to stand for Percival Harrison Fawcett. August 9th. I'm leaving wait, this wait. page here to... Wait, wait. Okay. There was like... Jack's Journal 6. But... What? Okay, sure. Sure then. August 9th. I'm leaving this page here to assuage any mystery should the rest of this quest prove as fatal for me as it has been for my party. My name is Jack Fawcett. I set out from Cuyaba Mato Grosso on the 20th of April 1925 with my father, Percival Harrison Fawcett, and my best and longtime friend, Raleigh Rimmel, in search of Zed. I am the only one left. My father was lost to a pair of fierce jungle cats and rallied to blunder. I myself am worse for wear, but refused to give up. My father believed we are close to Zed and so do I. So leaving two graves behind me, I will push west still with the hope that I am not walking to my own end. Your testes must be gigantic. After two people died, I would have gone home. My dear Nina, once again the attempt to write is fraught with difficulty. However, those flies and bees and bugs galore that I wrote her before, all of those pinhead-sized stinging horrors, would have been a welcome attrition now that I have faced down tooth and claw. I fought bravely, but the confrontation did not go in my favor. I will spare you the details out of compassion and not egotism. My wounds have been packed with yarrow and a stable, but I can feel infection in the blood. If you are reading this, then you know I have not survived this place. I instructed Jack not to go on. We lost young Rimmel a few weeks ago. This place, Nina, is not meant for the likes of men, and I will not rob you of a son as I have a husband. I'm tired now. Jack is sleeping by the fire, and I am certain that when he awakes, I will have slipped into my own slumber. I love you, Nina. Good night, Percy. Oh, that's uh... Whatever weapon these were attached to has rusted away in the jungle's humidity. There's something etched on them. Can barely make it out. P H F Percy Fawcett. But we must be thousands of kilometers from his last known position. There we go. In the early 19th century. This was used to measure the angle between an astronomical object and horizon for the purposes of celestial navigation. Ha! <laughs> Sextant. There's an inscription here. To my son, Jack, may you never lose sight of your horizons. Where? Where's the inscription? What? Uh, whatever. Lara says there's inscription, there's inscription. Within lies Raleigh Rimmel, friend, 1925. <laughs> there's a little more. Beware, traps are hit.
Beware. Traps ahead. Community in need. Do not hide good food from guests because it will turn into worms. Wise. I've been doing some research and I think we might be able to set ourselves up with a homemade refinery. It's going to be a lot of work though and I can't do it alone. We'll need to build an oil tank, 1,000 liter capacity. The hull of the ship sunk in the river could be used for the tank. Any volunteers for a salvage mission? We'll need to set up a system to collect the crude. Who wants to be in charge of the bucket brigade? Once we get these things set up, we should be able to make diesel, kerosene, and petrol. Enough to fly the planes and eventually maybe even turn a profit. What the hell is this about? I am collected in the village of Kuwagyaku. Oh, okay. So here's the thing. This is going to be very, very long because... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Wow. Um, yeah, it's really a lot. You know what? Let's just read the Trinity one and be done with it. When the Lord gave his covenant to Noah, saying never again will he destroy this world, it can be interpreted as he has decided humanity has learned their lesson. But have we? There is also a different interpretation to be made, and that is that... He has given the agency of destruction to mankind itself. We are responsible for every living soul, and they are now tarnished and besot. It has been 4,000 years since the world saw purity, and we aim to end that. We will be the architects of the new world. We will pave the street to heaven for all. We will usher an end to this sinful, reprehensible world. Oh. Okay, there's not a lot of stuff here. I guess we're done. I'm not gonna go 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 further into this because there's so much. Okay. Let's save the game and uh we'll proceed on to what appears to be the final stretch.